Welcome to the Spiritual Gifts Podcast. I'm Sam Jackson, campus pastor at Gateway Redlands, joined by... Sarah Watterson, the care pastor of Gateway. The care pastor. Well, Absolutely. That, you, you seem very proud of that as you said that Absolutely. then. And you should be. Absolutely. What a Goodness, what a privilege role. I get as a job. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it means that if you're caring, none of the rest of us have to. Yeah, I'm very caring. We all remember <laughs> that in the room, you know. <laughs> the care Excellent. is here. Well, Sarah, it's great to co-host this these few episodes it's of podcast. We're looking forward yeah, to it. This is the first exciting. one we're doing together. I know. I feel very, you know, very posh, really, to be sitting here, especially okay. with um, Mr. Sirks in the room as well. well it's going to be a uh, good one, this one. Let's just yes. uh, let's just keep the tension before we introduce him uh, <laughs> later on. Tell us, we are we are doing um, a spiritual gift here that uh, you know it's, it, people talk about this mm. a lot. Uh, we're talking about tongues, the gift of tongues, and with that. The gift of interpretation. Yes. Why don't you give us a bit of a biblical overview of so those gifts? The first time that tongues is talked about is when the Holy Spirit comes and just blows everybody away that day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've got all these people who are milling around and suddenly they're hearing their own language being mm-hmm. spoken and think these are crazy people and what on earth is going on. And that's the first time I think we hear about it. Well, we I know we hear about it in the Bible. And then we learn a bit more in Corinthians where it kind of talks about, you know, what this gift actually is. And it talks about how, you know, this is a this is a place that you can commune with God um, in, a, in a way that you don't in other terms. And you, we can glorify God in other words. Um, but it's a spiritual gift that I think a lot of people can feel a little bit uneasy about maybe sometimes. They're not kind of quite sure about what's Mm. going on there. So I think this is a really great opportunity for us to kind of unpack that a little bit more. Absolutely. I mean, this this is a gift that is still... Happening today. I mean, Absolutely. let's nail our, our colours to the wall. Yeah. That's uh, we we are very happy for and people to be. It's a very be... powerful gift as Absolutely. well. I think you Absolutely. know. Definitely. And uh, as you said before, you let the cat out of the bag about oh, our, our Sorry special about that, guest everybody. today, Sorry. referring to him as a cat. Uh, <laughs> I apologise for that. Andrew Serkin, thanks so much for joining us. Woo! Today. Round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> Good to be with you this <laughs> afternoon. We're recording this. Yes. After lunch, the post lunch. Yeah. Here we go. We'll try to. Uh, it up. I'm sure you're going to keep us awake, mate. T- tell yeah. us. So this is this is a. You're sitting in the chair today because this is a gift that you have been given. Uh, tell us. Tell us the origin story, mate. Tell us. Uh, take us back to the first time when it started to happen for you, and maybe, maybe even before that, your yeah. understanding of this gift and how it works out for you. Uh, well, I, I grew up um, with my dad. My dad's a pastor, but also charismatic in his understanding and someone who. Um, spoke in tongues and so I grew up with a, a an understanding I guess that it was a gift and an acceptance even though I grew up in a, a probably a conservative context where it was a little bit of a hot button issue um, back in the day and so um, there was a bit of tension around it but I, I remember actually as a, a late teenager um, I remember it vividly I was sitting on the edge of my bed and I was doing Bible study um, in, in 1 Corinthians and I I just read clearly that Paul said that this is a this is a gift and it is a gift um, to be desired, um, and so I, I don't really know whether I had much tra- you know, people. It really wasn't something that was preached on or I'd, I'd spoken into much. But I just thought, all right, well, I'm I'm just going to give this a go. I'm just going to try and speak in tongues, and so I literally had to and did open my mouth and tried to make it a different noise. Um, I said, come, you know, it's like, God, help me with this. I'm going to step into it. Here we go. Mm. And there is that step of faith, I think, yeah. with 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 any gift and with the same with the gift of tongues is it's it's actually opening up your mouth and just in that in that state of prayer and that state of worship speaking out. And um, that's when I I I believe I received the gift of tongues and began to, to speak in in a language that um, was distinct and very different to English, and I don't speak any other languages, so <laughs> I could be could be you know praying in Russian or <laughs> some right. kind of unspoken language from um, societies and cultures past. I don't know, but uh, or a heavenly languages, as we see in Scripture. But uh, yeah, it's that that was that was the beginning of of my journey with tongues. So, Andrew, how have you seen that play out in your life as you've got older and obviously now stepped into the role of being a pastor? How does, that, how does that play out in your role as a pastor, but also for you personally in your own life? Yeah, I probably see more as personal than as a pastor, firstly, um, although it does have certainly implications on ministry. I reckon over the years it's ebbed and flowed. 
Like there have been seasons where it's been really present in my life and other seasons where it hasn't. And um, I reckon to, to, to my loss. Um, but it, it, it works out in, in – in, and, and maybe – I can talk about what I think is going on when I'm doing it. Let me talk personally and I'll talk. I'll just talk about yeah. ministry. Um, but uh, often it's in seasons, in moments where I don't know how to pray. That, that for me is the yeah. gift of tongues. Yeah. And, and, and Paul writes in Romans chapter to 8 about how there are sighs and groans too deep for mm. words yeah. that the spirit enters in. And, and it is in those moments where when I find myself going, God, I don't know how to pray, but I'm burdened, or I don't. I, I, yeah. There is something that there is more here of you. Mm. There's more. There's something deeper here that I can't put my words to, and that's where I spill out with tongues. So, do you mean, Andrew, that uh, like you, you know what you're praying about? So you've got a not you've got a person in mind, or you've got a situation in mind, but you can't see a way in your own wisdom the way through, or are you just talking? You're in a, you're in a room, you're on your own, and you're just Worshipping, or there's no um, nothing in your mind. Yeah, it could be both. both. Often, o- often it's the the, the latter. Mm. Um, it'll be I'll just be in a like in worship. Often in worship, um, I'll find myself. Um, you know, there are words that I just you know I can't explain, or or if there is a, it's probably both, and then there is a burden. And what happens is um, is that as I engage in 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 praying, speaking in tongues. My heart and my mind are directed by the Spirit, so it's not like uh, I'm absent-minded. It, mm. It's it's not it's not a a vacation of of my intellect or my my heart. What I find happen is that the Spirit actually um, enables my my heart and my mind to connect with His heart, and my heart is filled with thoughts of Him mm. or His heart. It's a really hard way to mm. you know uh, to explain it, but that's that is actually what is happening. So it's not mindless. Yes. It's not mindless babble. Yes. It's actually spirit filled, heart directed, and, and I, I find myself my my intent, my heart, my will, my prayer is still directed towards Him or for that person or whatever it is. Mm. Yes. Mm. Um, that's what's going on in my spirit and my heart at, yeah. the, and mind at that moment. And outworking that uh, into edifying the church. So that's you just spoke personally. Talk to yep. us about what this looks like from a ministry perspective in the yeah, lives yeah, of others. Sure. Um, yeah. So so within the context of ministry, I, I find that you know there are there are moments and times for me personally where where even in the context of worship, where I find myself singing out. And there have been times where in the congregation, just inviting people either to to sing and pray either in in English or in another language in in tongues is is appropriate and we can talk maybe a little bit about practically how that works cuz there I know that there are some issues around public declaration in tongues but mm. as a corporate space it's actually a beautiful sound mm. um, and I've certainly been in places both here in Australia and, and certainly when I was in ministering in the UK where this would be common practice for us um, in the church, that I, the Anglican church I was involved with, where that there would be moments, and we'd do it, you know, we'd do it at Alpha, like so. This would be stuff that we'd be inviting even people who weren't of faith to say, mm. we want to invite you because the Spirit is real and He wants to reveal Himself, and so that'd be pretty wild and scary, yeah. and wow. yeah. Um, but but yeah, so we see that see that at work, um, yeah, in a, in, a, in a, particularly in corporate worship. So talk to us then about uh, interpretation. Like when you were yep. talking personally, I, I got the impression I, I don't have this gift, by the way. I should, I should, I don't know about you, yeah. Sarah, but I don't have yeah, this gift. Yeah, and it's worth saying that not everybody, as, totally. we, as we acknowledge, I, I do. But yes. yeah, absolutely yes. not. Oh, I'm the odd does. one out. Fine. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, I've I've asked for it, and thus far have not been given it. Um, but um, but when you describe the personal uh, the personal ex- uh, experience of praying in tongues, it's like the interpretation is happening for you in your own head. But when, yes, that's right. when you when you go public. Uh, so to speak, um, this gift of interpretation is mentioned in scripture. But I actually, I actually have not. I've heard people pray in tongues publicly. Yep. I don't hear a lot of interpretation. Right. So, so talk to us about what that looks like and why that's an important part of this. Yeah. Well, listen, it's important because it's in scripture. Sure. So Paul, um, when he writes to the Corinthians, does say, "Listen, tongues, um, pursue it, ask for it. It's a great gift, um, like prophecy uh, and other gifts." Um, but he puts some some um, 
some boundaries around it or some ways in which it's to uh, be used in the context of public worship or else it is just mindless. It doesn't help anybody else mm. listening because there's yeah. no context and so it's uh, not it's not useful. Um, and so Paul says if if a, if a word is spoken out over, and that's probably where I'd make a distinction, you know, if everyone singing in personally they're in, in, in English or in tongues, that's one thing. But if somebody gets up and says, oh, I feel like I've got a, a, a tongue to speak, which I have been in those mm. contexts, not recently actually, but certainly um, been in those those contexts, uh, charismatic community, the, 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 someone speaks uh, a word of tongues and then the, the pastor or, you know, whoever that is conducting the service say we're now going to wait for tongues, uh, for, mm. sorry, an interpretation. Yeah, right, okay. And so then, the, then we'll wait. And I've seen it mm. both where somebody else has given the interpretation mm. uh, or the same person okay. uh, who's, who's given the mm. tongue has then been able to interpret the tongue and say this is what I feel God is saying to this. Sure. And then, and then there's an interesting conversation where you go, well, is you know, is this a word of prophecy? Is this a... Is this, you know, what is God doing? What is he saying? Is this yeah. for someone in particular? Is it a word of knowledge? Is it a word of wisdom? That's probably, we don't have time to go there now. Sure. But yeah. Yeah. That's, how, that's how I would, how, how I see it working, out working. Yeah, that's good. So if someone has this gift of um, speaking in tongues within the church context, you know, they've just done a test and, and that's why they're listening in, how would you best say to them to engage with that and engage to to use that to glorify God within the gateway setting. Yeah, well, if they've done the test, they probably already know that they've been <laughs> speaking in tongues because they're already is. doing it. Yeah. And I'd want to, I, I, can I just address those who are not sure? Because the reality is, is... If you are doing, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's kind of like this one. is a bit of a strange one for the, for the whole, you know, for the... Um, for the, doing the test, but you might w- want to. You might be listening on to this and going, I don't have it, but I'd really like to know more yeah, about it or I'd like yeah. to know. And I'd just say, firstly, have a go. Mm-hmm. Ask and say, God, this is something I'd, I'd like and then open your mouth and begin to speak and it will feel very strange. Mm-hmm. And there's almost, it, it does because tongues, speaking in a weird language, you don't understand, is just strange. Let's just embrace weird. the weirdness yeah. of that, right? Um, so there's that. And then I'd say if you do, uh, have the gift of tongues. You sense you've got it. And you've 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 stepped out. And you've tried. Oh, this is a bit this is a bit weird. This I'm not quite sure how to make sense of this. I think it's like you'll probably hear in a number of these podcasts. You've just got to keep doing it. Mm. Mm. Just keep doing it. It's it's like a, so for me now it just trips out. Like I'll just find myself. It's weird because it's a prayer language. I'll just be walking along the street and all of a sudden I'll just be I'll be praying in tongues. Uh, yeah. Uh, and um. And and so just it's just a, it's a it's a, it's like a muscle. It's just practicing, and then and then as you're doing it, um, allow allow your heart and your mind to be directed. You'll find this anyway, but be directed towards the Lord, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and He will speak to you. And it's just and yeah. maybe maybe you want to journal down. You know, if it's per- personal, maybe there are things that you need to write down or engage with that in different ways. But yeah. I, I I actually just think it's. Doing it, have a go, practicing. I yeah. love that. I love that uh, Pentecost moment. I, we talk about in the in these podcasts about what the spiritual gift looks like outside of the church, and it's really clear from that Pentecost moment, as you read to us before, Sarah, that, that the, there was an evangelistic moment when the gift of tongues came, yeah. and it was it was people singing the praises of God in languages that weren't natural to them. Yeah. Um, so ex- I, I wonder, can you talk about that as an experience? Like I've heard stories myself. It's, I won't go into them now because they're not my stories. They're stories I've heard and we haven't got time. But the exercising of this, of this gift in the context of the world rather than within the church. Is yes. that something you've seen or experienced? Yeah, I know, absolutely. And particularly in the in, with Alpha because I've had a fair bit to do with Alpha where, as I said before, now it is in that you could say it's in a church context. We've done Alpha in very oh, various sure. contexts, and sure. people who have just have come along or exploring faith, but are not in you know uh, of uh, who, who aren't Christians, but have been invited into to ex- and they've experienced this context of tongues and um, and there is a there is a there is something about it which is alive, and, and I've mm. you know been with people uh, who have come to faith in those context. Yeah. Now they may not have immediately stepped out and started praying in tongues. I, I know that there are stories there. Mm. I, um but they've they've in, they've seen that there is something going on. There's yeah. the power of the presence yeah. of God is at work. Um I don't have any stories of people going up to others and praying mm-hmm. in the in the office block. Yeah. Uh, right. Praying in tongues. But yeah. I, I you know 
certainly if you are in your workplace yep. and you are yep. stressed out or a, a, this is a – and that has been my con, yeah, you know, sure. certainly in previous jobs as well where yeah. I, when I wasn't working for the church. Yeah. Engaging in tongues under my breath. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Or whatever, using it in that space yeah. as well. Such, yeah. you know, is that, that's where it's a gift. It's, yeah, you know, absolutely. Just uh, finding ways to, to engage in God in that way. So, Mate, it'd be great if you took a moment now for people listening to this episode because they – well, yeah, like you said, they've either got it or they haven't yet or they haven't at all. Um, but uh, the people who have it, and particularly for those who are at the early stage – uh, and 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 sort of trying to understand the purpose of this gift and God's intent in giving the gift to them. Would you pray for them? Yeah, love to. Let's pray. Well, God, I thank you that uh, the gifts of the Spirit are exactly that. They're gifts, and we thank you that we can't strive for it or earn it. All we can do is receive it. And so, God, I pray that um, right now for those who are with us, God that you will, by your grace, just give your gifts. And I pray, Lord, for those who uh, want the gift of tongues. Lord, Holy Spirit, right now, in this moment, may you pour out your Spirit on them. And even now, uh, God, as, as we're praying, I pray that people will just experience your grace, they experience your love, experience your presence. And even as I'm praying right now, if you're listening to this and you would like to receive the gift of tongues, I just encourage you just to maybe just open your mouth and speak out right now. Holy Spirit, come. Give your gifts. Give the gift of tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are a good God and that you are for us. Thank you that you give us ways to connect with you, to glorify you, and to know your presence. I pray, God, that you'll continue to lead us and guide us. In your mighty name, amen. 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 Thanks so much, Sirks. It's been a great chat. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.